Should we get started? That's where I could see him. <laughs> he was betrayed by Elizabeth Keene. I can't imagine what he'll do if he ever finds out that it was me. He was charged with treason. Has the jury reached a verdict? He thwarted a dangerous conspiracy. Mr. Reddington, it's good to have you back, Oh, sir. it's good to be had. But now he's been kidnapped in a cliffhanger that has everyone guessing. The blacklist requires an incredible cast. What I want to do is save your life. Insane plots. A team of writers with no boundaries. <laughs> and of course, the art of the cliffhanger. Let's go behind the blacklist. Hello and welcome to Behind the Blacklist. I'm John Bokenkamp. And I'm John Eisendrath. We're executive producers and showrunners of The Blacklist. Let's call it The Blacklist. That sounds exciting. Six years ago, the brilliant, enigmatic Raymond Reddington stepped into the FBI headquarters and onto our television screens. His expectation, and I'll scratch your back if you scratch mine, relationship with the FBI and one particular rookie agent. I speak only with Elizabeth Keene. What's followed has been a series chock full of action, an ever-evolving family mystery, and of course, some seriously scary blacklisting. Today, we're taking you on a journey from the studio lot here in Hollywood, where our team of writers spends weeks and months researching, writing, and refining scripts, to New York, where our incredible cast and production team take our scripts and ideas to the screen. John and I are gonna sit down with our actors to talk about their experience from casting to the final cut. We'll top it off with an epic Blacklist trivia showdown. This is gonna be fun. Winning always is. Also, fresh from the edit bay, which happens to be right over there, we do have a top secret peek at season seven coming your way. And literally leading to an explosive crescendo. Let's start by heading into the writer's room in LA. Here we are in the Blacklist Writer's Room. Hi, I'm Lucas Ryder. I'm Taylor Martin. I'm Sean Hennon. I'm Sam Christopher. My name's Ia Samba. I'm Kelly Johnson. I'm Noah Schechter. This is the Brain Trust, the team. Are there any characters that you like writing more or less? I think pairing anybody off with the Reddington character is always interesting um, because I think that he has, with all the members of the task force, he has a slightly different relationship with everyone. Is it just me or is this an absolutely spectacular night? The way that he relates to everyone is a little bit different, and uh, you get to approach those scenes a little bit differently. The two characters that are at the center, obviously, are Reddington and Liz Keene, but what's been fun and interesting about developing the other characters around them is they all are in service of that central relationship. Liz and Red's relationship has obviously evolved, but I think Aram used to be really intimidated by Red. Now... Mr. Reddington. He respects Aram. I'm here to pay my debt to you, Aram. Cooper, for example, is kind of a father figure to Liz, but we've watched his relationship with Reddington grow over these years. I can count on one hand the number of people to whom I owe my life. You are one of them. James is so devoted to this show and like his character. One of my favorite moments that I always think about like that he has is like it's Dembe and Red and they're looking at like a Highlights magazine. Found the teacup. Oh, and the banana. In what world would you see someone play, like looking at a Highlights magazine and they're like trying to find something? The sailboat. Oh, my God. Oh. What James does so well is that he earns every one of those comic moments. Our journey begins in the home of the double bacon corn dog. Welcome to Iowa. I keep a stack of GQ magazines next to my desk, just in case I ever have to pull out the name of a suit or a bottle of wine or something to put into the dialogue to, to keep him fresh and on the cutting edge. You still wear the hell out of the tux. I try to read books about the CIA, starting all the way back before it was even the CIA and just did a sort of history of spy tech and spy practices. There's nowhere you can go. There's no one you can trust to keep you from us. Maybe we could just talk a little bit about uh, the tent pole events that the mythology of the show is based on. About every three months, uh, don't we have you like walk us through the pastoral <laughs> sort of like in the beginning, you know, and then walk through the whole thing. I can't do it. There's a core sequence of events that we always go back to. The central secret, if you will, at the core of the series was something that we had when we started. 
The history really begins when Reddington is working overseas as a counterintelligence agent, and he has an affair with Katerina Rostova, who at the time is married to Alexander Kirk. There has been a lot of mythology that's already been presented about Katerina Rostova. Katerina has been assigned to seduce him, to infiltrate his life. Katerina, in terms of who she was, is such a motivating factor for so many different characters. Who's trying to kill you? Motivating a lot of Reddington's actions, certainly motivating Liz. My character is as uh, cunning and capable as Reddington. She's just as intelligent. I would say as ruthless. She matches him in that way. Uh, they have a child. That child is Masha, who, of course, we know is Liz. Katerina really wants to make sure that she is safe and she's going to do whatever it takes. Lock the door behind me. And Reddington does not know that she's been assigned to him. He does not know that she is actually a KGB agent or that she is a double agent working for both the KGB and the Cabal. They are among the most powerful men and women on the planet. And in his desperation, Reddington takes his daughter, flees to the United States. This is where it happened. The night of the fire is kind of what it all comes down to. I mean, that's sort of the night that created Red, whoever he is, and also created Liz. Elizabeth Keene no longer sees right and wrong, black and white. She understands that there really is a vast gray area. That is the area that we navigate in our lives. Liz, who was hiding in the closet, ends up firing the gun and killing the original Red Reddington. What you see? I remember everything. I like that if everything's gonna go south, Reddington is still prepared for that. You know, we keep going back to Cape May over and over and over again. That, I think, is sort of a foundational moment for the Katarina character walking into that ocean. We've sort of revisited that moment throughout the years and seeing from different perspectives her, you know, final walk into hey. the water and being able to open an episode and start from the moment that she came back out of the water. We have the opportunity to do for fans of the show is hear all the solutions, one after the other, of some of these larger mysteries that we've gotten to lay out. I, I think what's cool about that is that, okay, we know she's gonna walk out of the water. We know at the end of the episode, she and Ilya are gonna team up and have this plan, but we're still like finding it and making stuff up along the way in between. I have a way to escape the cabal, the KGB, the Americans, and no one has to die. But there are still some unanswered questions. One of the things that's really special about this series is unlike shows where you're finding it as you go, we've always had that sequence and we've always known the central truth at the center of the series. Right. And so it is pretty cool as a writer to be working on the same story for this amount of time, because I don't think you see that that often. Thank you for joining us in the writer's room. We will see you in New York City. Bye. Bye. We've also got a sneak peek of season seven coming up with all the action, intrigue, espionage, and thrills you would expect from The Blacklist. Hey everyone, welcome to New York City, where we shoot every episode of The Blacklist. We're gonna take you to a round table discussion with our cast. Come join us. Well, welcome. It's been, what, it's seven years. Did you guys have any idea when mm. this began? The script you guys turned in for the pilot is well known as one of the Great. best pilot scripts going. I read it and I knew not only that it was gonna be a huge hit, I knew that I was Liz Keen too. When you came into Sony for the test, you had um, like scotch tape on your wrist. Oh, that's right. I was like, what's on your wrist? Like, I don't know, did you hurt yourself? And she's like, no, I have a scar and I want to remember and play to the scar. So I was like, oh, well, that's very serious. Yeah, that really was always the thing. Feeling the scar. Yeah. Know? May I see it? I can't even remember. You did come in. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but it was he just it was rolled in off a homelet. He I did. did. Yeah. <laughs> I did. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. sort of true. I do sort of. Yeah. Oh, no. I could do your show. I could do your show. Yeah. I could do your show. Uh, and I was in a good spot, thankfully. And um, you know, I'd heard the whispers of this great show, and 
My manager was like, I got it. Here it is, read it. And I remember going, okay, this is it. Like, this is the one. Can we look at a couple? We have like some audition uh, pieces. Oh my God. Can we? Like, uh, you don't. Step back in time. <laughs> you know, actors uh, hate auditions. Oh, really? I, actually, this is oh, the best tape I've ever made. Right. Let's roll it. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, when you talk. Like that. Yeah. Yes, MB. So you're telling me that this guy's eluded the FBI for over 25 years. It's crazy. I mean, we just did a uh, Jane Doe. There we go. Excellent. All right. <laughs> <laughs> what are you, you guys doing? standing yeah. there? Like, they just had us just stand there. That's our chemistry read. My chemistry read yeah. is you guys just standing there yeah. next to each other? That's wild. That's, it. That's good. No, we read, but I we don't know. We didn't have to read. We were just standing next to each other. It was obvious to you guys. I mean, did you see that magic? You didn't feel the chemistry? Uh, I did. Dishab, tell us about your uh, initial sort of audition. I really didn't know if it was good or bad. It was improv. I really couldn't feel, you know, right. what I did. I hit the line. They asked me a whole bunch of questions. I answered them. Tell me how you came to be red. <laughs> well, red likes to play chess, and so do I. I mean, it's a game of the mind. Well, you made an impression very quickly because that was, I think, the second episode that you came mm, yeah. in on. And by the, I think it was the ninth episode, Someone was getting killed. And Spader was like, well, it can't be done. Absolutely not. <laughs> I just, and I remember I was in a van with James, and he says, uh, someone's going to get killed, but it's not going to be you. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, oh. OK. You know what happened with you? You were such a good guest star that they, they put you on the show. <laughs> yeah, but I remember that improv. It was at the end. Of, Thank yeah. you, Ram. You're, yeah. oh, you're welcome. It was oh, just that's a little the, moment. That's from the, that was the first episode I did. I was like, I located them to go cap, save her from Wu Jing. And, yeah, and oh, Parminder Wu and Jing. Diego Thank just like, took off. Him. And they didn't yell, cut. I was like, oh, I just started improvising. And you guys kept it. Thank you, Aram. You're welcome. Go get them. For me, this show has been about those special experiences that you yeah. have because we do have such a revolving door of yeah. incredibly interesting actors that come on the show. Hello, Gary. Oh, wow! Yeah. Oh, my God! Yeah. That was a setup. That was a setup, wasn't it? That was a good setup. Hello. Speaking of actors Hello. who made the experience better for us. Uh-huh. It's good this to see you so all. Good. The journey that a lot of us are on in relation to Red Reddington is how do we find our value in a space that is so inhabited already? What's really interesting is working with James when it was fun, it was fun, and when it was deadly, it felt deadly. What am I gonna do with you, Kate? It always felt real yeah. from him. And so you just go there. Whenever one of us is in danger, everyone stops and makes sure that the next, that our family member is okay and we'll do everything to. That's what I'm excited about about season seven is it's the inverse. Dembe calls and says, we got a problem. And the family sort of comes together in a very different way. Uh, to figure out what's going on. This has been super cool to sit down and have a little yeah, reminisce. Let's do it in another seven forward. years. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, James would always, Maybe not. James always makes a joke that sooner or later, he and I will be in this retirement home. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There you go. As we all know, it often takes more than one draft and more than one take to get everything just right. Sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> that, I just, okay. I, I, that's, that's pure that hurt. Yeah. <laughs> we have a little treat for everyone. Bloopers. Here are a few of our favorites. To the Bat Cave. He told me if I told anyone, he'd start dating my mom. Please don't let him date my mom. I live with her. <laughs> <laughs> You used us to find him, so you... No, that's not my line. D do a better job. <laughs> <That's not right. laughs> hands on the I wasn't hips, indignant something. enough. Whoops. Oh, no. Someone, would you just grab me that? I don't know who that is. Maybe a search warrant that's stuck in my ass wool. Thank you. Well, <laughs> this is funny. FBI. Is there a right. problem? No, it's upside down. Ah! Don't cut, don't cut, don't cut. I'm in the zone. We're in the zone. <laughs> I just showed Kirk DNA evidence that you're not my father, that he's not. 
kidding. I'm fine. And the cake, please. Oh, he's gone. <laughs> <laughs> There's, isn't there more to that, or is that the whole line? That's it? Oh, sorry. Okay. That's wow. <laughs> I didn't hit it. Does that make any difference to anybody? Here you go. Here you go again. <laughs> yeah, right. We can do this all day. In the spirit of Red and Dembe, who love nothing more than a game of wits, we asked a few of our special guests to play Quiz Master in a trivia showdown with the writers and the cast. And I do believe we should do pretty well in the trivia contest. You'd think. <laughs> Where was the fulcrum hidden? No clue. Let's say Montana. I know it was in a car. In a briefcase? It was originally in the bunny. Oh, inside of Liz's bunny. What is the name of the restaurant where Liz always celebrates her birthday? I literally wrote about it in a script. I, dumpling soup. Wing Yee's? Wing Yee? Wing Yee's. Wing Yee. Oh, sorry. Which, parenthetically, is where my dad, my brother, and I used to eat dinner every Sunday night in Chicago. I figured since you weren't going to Wing Yee, I was bringing Wing Yee to you. Who changed the code in the cage in the post office to protect Liz Keen? Cooper. A rom change the code. A rom agent. A rom most to buy. Bobby. What's that, son? N A V A B I. Open the door. According to Reddington, how many secrets is the average person keeping at any time? I'll say seven. Seventeen. Twelve. You pick a number. Ten. Three. Thirteen. Thirteen secrets. I'll tell you mine if you tell me yours. What did Reddington whisper to Alexander Kirk? I know the answer to that, but I'm not going to say what it was. You can't hear it. I totally cannot tell you that. I know, but I can't tell you. Are we supposed to know that? Well, I'm not going to tell you, but it's surprising I'm here today. What is Mr. Kaplan's real name? Uh, Tom? Oh, I have no idea. Kate Jackson? It's right here on the tip of my tongue. Catherine Nemec. Kate. Don't start with me, Kate. I'll handle my business, you handle yours. What was Dembe's college major? Philosophy? You stumped me. Applied math. Economics. Archery. English literature. English literature. He graduated university with a bachelor's degree in English literature. What does Tom tell Liz to do when she's undercover and doesn't have an answer? Smile and nod. Oh, it will come to me, but not enough to, ah. Oh. Try to make out with the person? <laughs> to lie? Tell the truth. Oh, sneeze? Sneeze. Sneeze. Who is blacklister number one? Uh, trick question. Trick question. We have to wait and find that out. You'll see. Thank you for playing. Still to come, hot off the press, a sneak peek of season seven. The season ended last year in crisis. Katerina. People have been waiting for this character to emerge for a long, long time. And going up to him, it's still cloaked in mystery because we have this very affectionate moment where we, we kiss each other. And then get him with the needle. Reddington has disappeared. We don't know where he is, who took him. And how is he going to get out of it? Now that Katerina Rostova has entered the picture, I think that's going to dramatically alter Liz's life. Everyone in the task force is aware that Red Reddington is not the real Red Reddington, but we still want to save him because he is who he is to us. I am what I am. If you're trying to figure out who he is, you have to start from the question of, who would care this much about Elizabeth Keene and keeping her safe? And when you find out the answer, it needs to reconcile with that question, and I promise it will. That's one of the things that's most exciting about season seven is that we, we start to look into uh, some answers and connect some dots in ways that we haven't before. I have a feeling it's gonna be a very good year. <laughs> it's time to pull back the curtain on our brand new sneak peek of season seven.
Do you recall the incident? Katerina. Do you know who did this to you? Raymond's gone. Gone where? Taken. He's in trouble, Elizabeth. I have been hunting you and Katerina Rostova. Like chasing an illusion. They deserve to know. Know what? That the real Raymond Reddington died. I was beginning to think that you didn't exist. And yet, voila, here you are. And the man you know as Reddington was once a KGB agent named Ilya Koslov. That's impossible. I knew Reddington. I served with him. Why can't I move? Mr. Reddington, you're lucky to be alive. Why are you protecting her? Betraying her would be like betraying myself. So it is you. Or are you expecting someone else? My blood runs cold. Reddington, where is he? The only thing that matters is that Reddington yeah, is in French custody, and we have to get him back. But before we're finished, you are going to tell me everything I want to know. FBI! Let me get this straight. Raymond Reddington is your father. The real one. Find Reddington and kill him. But he's dead because you shot and killed him. When I was four, yeah. It's complicated. You're definitely going to need therapy. Elizabeth, you raised an old ghost. And that was just a taste of what's in store next season. Questions will be answered, scores will be settled, secrets will be revealed, and we'll toss a few new mysteries and a lot of dangerous new blacklisters in along the way. Maybe even blacklister number one. Maybe. And of course, you can count on your favorite characters, brought to you by our extremely talented writers, cast, and crew. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you for season seven. The man we hate to love lives to fight another day. Just the sort of thing that gets me out of bed in the morning.